It's a lot of yellow. In a lot of different ways. Jam that down a little bit. This game does get a bit loud. <clears throat> Where everything's balanced for y'all. Good to see you. Very happy to be back for the sixth year in a row for the Coin Op Classic. Now very much becoming an RGL staple and I'm very proud to say that it is. Got a few games this year to continue our beat em up block, which thanks again to Drum for kicking us off there with Altered Beast. And yes, be, by all means, get your Simpsons quotes in chat. I'll probably be reading all of them. Though maybe not quickly. Uh, the last time I played this game was in, in the Coin-Op Classic at least, was in 2019. I did a hardest difficulty run, which with the with the worst character, no less. But uh, I kind of just did that as a meme. Not the hardest character bit, but the the hardest difficulty in this game is is honestly not that big of a step up. All the boss strats are exactly the same. You just have more enemies, and in a way where it feels redundant, not where it feels more challenging. If that makes sense. So, the last time I ran this on normal was actually as a race with another speedrunner of this game by the name of Zerst. Point up classic uh, alumnus in his own right. Amazing arcade runner. We had a really close race. Uh, I main Marge, he mains Bart, and I think we had like a nine second difference. So this year, because I want to bring it back for the marathon circuit, early cheap plug for Retrothon 2024. <laughs> I wanted to just do the most competitive category, which is the default difficulty. So we're gonna go ahead and fire this in. I will be playing in the Japanese version because it's the only version that's actually worth a damn for speedrun, so we'll go ahead and pick Marge. Marge. I can consistently clear with all characters, but Marge is by far my most comfortable and my main, so. Marge. To kick us off, we're gonna hit this guy. I'm gonna booty the rest of these guys. Watch out for the nuke real quick. Take that. Let this guy spawn, do that. He got out of the way, that's unfortunate, but now he's dead. Wait for the bus. Couple later bosses, quick spoiler there. So the Japanese version of this game has a couple of upsides. For one thing, you actually can have more than the max health. As evidenced there by the fact that the yellow health there is temporary. And second, we have more weapon pickups. And these are valuable. Quite valuable. As I'll see if I can demonstrate on this boss, you jerk. Yeah. Professor's being an a-hole, hang on. Yep. And then one more, I think. There we go. He did not cooperate, but we're fine. <sighs> so for those unfamiliar with the story, it's pretty tacked on in this game. Smithers steals a diamond from Mr. Burns. Runs into Homer on the way out of the jeweler. Diamond pops into Maggie's mouth, and instead of doing something practical like, oh, I don't know, just taking the diamond out of her mouth, he just straight up kidnaps Maggie. Oh wow, I can't remember the last time I lost that. Oh, it's because I was only mashing one button. <laughs> Here I thought I was playing Ninja Baseball Batman, I guess. That's a that's a one button mash. Anyway, on to stage two. Gotta go rescue Maggie. More booty. This stage is a bit more fleshed out than the first one. We're gonna have quite a bit more to do, especially with some of these sub weapons slide, please. Jump kick works. There we go. Yeah, yeah, so enemies can definitely hide off screen in safe spots. It's pretty annoying. They're not completely safe to every attack, but they are safe to your best attacks. Particularly booty and the dive that we're doing here with the, in this case is the hammer, but the broom has one as well. We saw the broom in the previous stage. Let me see if I can, eh. There's a way to not spawn that guy who pops out behind that container. I haven't quite figured out how it's supposed to work, but I thought staying close to the right side of the screen as possible would work, but I guess not. Fortunate about the cage hit there. Hit you, hit you. I'm gonna time these out. Now, I gotta be really careful here. There's a guy who's gonna be off the screen with a hammer. 
We can't dive on him, so I had to just do a grounded hit. It's a lot slower, but at least it'll hit him. Under a stage two boss, give me that, please. There's no reason not to pick up extra health. It might cost a few frames, but better off to have it, I think. Balloon's pretty easy, as long as you have a sub-weapon. Hit it on the first frame of recovery. Eight hits later, and there we have it. One and only Toad. So stage three is actually where the difficulty picks up a tad. My primary issue with it is the fact that we just really don't have a lot of room to move around. Like the, the top to bottom scale compared to especially like Krusty Land is pretty tiny. So we kind of just have to work within our limitations here. Up over there, take out you. Do that for speed. You can use that on any enemy. That's probably going to be pretty great, but that guy's spawning it all the way from the left. Like, no reason not to do it on him. Wow, nice. Good setup. Uh, okay, that was a little rude. Got baited. It happens. A little early on that. Take this. All right, so slingshot's actually busted. The US version of the game also has slingshot, but it doesn't one-shot zombies like it does here. We just get to pick them off clean like so. Show off a quick strat that Zerse showed me a while back. Normally I don't go for this, but health's important. Gotta get scared out of his gourd. And of course, because the Konami beat him up, we have the requisite elevator section. It's pretty easy. We actually get to time scam it. For those who have seen me run TMNT Arcade, it's the same philosophy as the uh, skateboard stage. Just have to wait to a certain musical cue. I'm not gonna interact with these enemies until it's time, because I don't want to spawn more of them. Enemies here aren't quite as dangerous as helicopters, but, you know, why give yourself more problems? Unless you're going for a score run. If you're trying to do a score run, absolutely kill as many enemies as you can. But, I'm just here to play the game. Uh, no. Nope. Uh, that's unfortunate that happens. Sometimes they're just so perfect with those baits. Alright, this requires a visual cue. I'm gonna take a second to try to set it up. Some micro-tapping. That should work. Okay, this boss is gonna go one of two ways. If I get the quick kill, it's gonna be easy breezy. If I don't, it's gonna be a pain. So let's go. Missed one hit, but other than that, that was optimal. He got away from the second swing, but thankfully got back into position for the rest. Yo, nice. I rarely get the booty hit on the barrel there. That was pretty darn good. Wait, these guys come out the door. I don't believe this hammer was exposed the last time I ran this. I actually found that from a YouTube video. <laughs> Wasn't a speed run or a 1cc or anything. It was just like a, a retrospective on the game. Uh, wow, okay. Guess I'll get this pie. The one that Homer said we gotta eat would be its own fault. Take this, take this. All right, so we need to keep our weapon here. We actually get the choice of two weapons, which is nice. They both function the same, but I tend to throw away the hammer just to have as a cheap projectile. A little bit of dance moves. Uh, really? That didn't hit you? And yeah, for speed purposes, sometimes enemies just don't have active hitboxes in places where you think they would, because they're kind of slippery. Never quite understood why that's the case, but I do the best I can to line it up. Get out of here, please. Okay, so this boss is pretty easy. It's actually even easier after the strat I discovered back in 2020. It was right before my SGDQ run that year. The strat was always just hit him on his wake up, but if you're standing behind him, he can't actually interact with you. So just time these short hop attacks on his get up and you're just gonna beat him every time. Ah uh, yes, bologna and bread, crucial. Okay, so stage five, aka the butt, is probably my vote for the hardest stage. As a counter offer to stage three, 
this stage, in my opinion, actually gives the amount of space the advantage to the enemy. Probably because of the layers, I'm really not sure that wasn't supposed to happen. Come here. Take this just cuz. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't try to dodge that, I guess. Anyway. Take this, line up a quadruple kill. Another slingshot. Slingshot's still busted, as we know. Sometimes that guy jumps, and I have to wait it out. If you wait it out to try to counterattack him, he can hit you if you're not fast enough, so that was a little risky, but it worked out. Jump this barrel. Sorry, boulder. Some bee. Got this broom hanging out by the bear. Fun fact, Bart can actually spawn that by throwing the uh, the slingshot that he had from the previous section. That's a speed strat exclusive to him. And yet, I still don't think he's an optimal speedrun character. So once uh, a runner by the name of Makina, former world record holder in this game, discovered this broom, this fight became pretty trivial. This used to be one of the hardest fights in the game. Still kind of unfortunate because you have RNG to deal with, how the boulders fall and everything. Uh, okay. That happens sometimes. His wake up's a little bit late. You should be able to beat it. How's my hair? But sometimes you don't. Okay, so our pursuit of Maggie has us falling over this waterfall. I'm gonna take a hard crash landing into the water. And now we wake up in a Kirby game. Quick setup there. So this stage is very clearly intended to be a fever dream. From a gameplay perspective, it's actually one of the more interesting stages because the enemies that exist in this stage don't exist in any other stage. Everything is unique to this stage only. A lot of really cool optimizations that have been found, particularly by Zerus. But unfortunately, we still don't have anything for the stupid saxophones. Those guys are jerks. That still wasn't even optimal, what I just did, but it was pretty good. Take that. Knock these jerks down. Let's see if we can line them all up. Sweet. Okay. Let's do one of those real quick. Nice double kill. So this nuke was incredibly handy, and another prop to Zerse there. The Bar Devil segment actually used to be one of the hardest in the stage, but finding that nuke turned into a completely trivial joke. So we have the bowling ball. We'll be using our bone bowling ball here soon. Uh, where are you going? Usually didn't scroll that far vertically. That was interesting. Got two hits. Very good. Optimally, you want to get two hits off the bowling ball there, so you kind of have to time it right before it's going to jump, so you get maximum damage. Still wasn't optimal in that regard, but pretty good. So, when the bowling ball is transitioning between phases, it's actually invincible. It'll look like it's taking the hit, and it is actually, you know, it has a hurt box, but you're not doing damage to it. So I just keep doing the booty buff just to make sure I can maintain rhythm. Just pretend Marge is dancing. Not too shabby, though. One of the few boss fights that feels exactly the same in every single version of the game. The only difference in US and world version is that you don't get the bowling ball weapon out of the mailbox. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Hey, ready? Let's do a little better this time. A uh, quick speed strat that I'm not good at. If you're any good at hovering, which a lot of Link to the Past runners are familiar with, you can hover over a button and you'll get much better times on bonus stages. Like, I got a five there. If you're uh, proper hovering, can get you in, like, the seven range. Saves a lot of time if you're good at it. Big props to Dark Alexander, my one-time co-op partner, for showing me that. I did not know that turkey was there. We're learning all kinds of things today. Almost in time for Feed the Kids, but not quite. This time it's Feed the Adults. Come here, you. Okay, now you're just being a tool. Please do that. So these guys I'm going to try to hit with grounded hits if they're just going to be annoying. Which they usually are. Get out of here, please. Mary Poppins, y'all. Okay, quick mid-boss. Here we have this sad bot. There's a quick speed strat I want to go for. 
Didn't get it because I missed a second. Oh, actually, I did get it. Okay, so if you kill those two guys fast enough, there's an enemy who would normally spawn out of that door that doesn't spawn if you are if you just do it really, really fast. Weird little bit of speed tech, but it's there. Okay, now for these enemies that are totally not foot soldiers. By the way, if you didn't have the hammer, this stage would be insane. Just wanted to point that out. This stage does throw everything but the kitchen sink at you, but because of the fact you basically get to start the stage off with a sub weapon, it's just not even a problem. Ninjas here can be a little obnoxious because their movement, but nothing too terrible, thankfully. There we go. <clears throat> oh, monkey's paw. Okay, so we have the Shogun. Also not based on anything else Konami has ever done. Pretty simple boss with a hammer dodge strat. That's unfortunate, I didn't want to miss that. Cool, I got that ninja on the way in. Let's see if he's gonna spawn some more cycles. Okay, cool. That guy has a weird... What do you even call it? He has things that he can do to extend the fight. Like jump cancel out of getting hit. If he does that, it just drags the fight on by as many as two more cycles. But he can't get out of a seventh cycle, thankfully. He's dead from there. All right, on to our final stage, which is just a very minor boss rush. By very minor, I mean two bosses that we haven't seen up to this point in the game. Yeah, take this. Missed it. Take this. There we go. So there's a specific strat I use on Smithers. I tend to go for five of these right away. Bait out a cape hit, do it again. Bait out another cape hit, do it again. Bait out another cape hit, do it again. One more. Now I'm just gonna give him the whole enchilada. There we go. If you try to fight Smithers normally and don't play lame as hell like that, it's actually a pretty awful fight. He runs really fast, he has really good zoning, and it's just generally unfun, so stick to him like glue and you're good. Alright, so for Burns, I tend to start it off a little slow because I want him to be all the way on the bottom so I can visual cue him into this bookcase. Just gonna hit him a bunch of times. I also want to point out this strat is not possible at all in the US version. He doesn't suffer hit stun like that. He has a ton of invulnerability after taking a hit. It's unfortunate. Uh, I guess I need to be a little bit up. All right, so we're a bit off axis here. That should work. Uh, okay, he realigned himself. Not good. This is the kind of stuff that can put a no miss in Jeopardy. Okay, on to phase three of five, because this is a normal boss fight. Did not want that. Yeah, that's not great. Not great. Don't like it. He was not supposed to get away like that. We are in a little bit of trouble. Mm, yeah, I don't love it. I can audible this, but I'd much rather show off the strat if I can. Yeah, he's just being the worst. Sometimes he escapes because he's misaligned. I don't like it, but I'll play it like it. I'll play it out. I uh, might be able to get it here. Yeah, there we go. Normally this is pretty well set up on the right side, and of course drop it again. He becomes more mobile as he drops in phases. Yep, that's an easier, all right. I won't put anything in jeopardy, I'm just annoyed. Uh, no. He is invincible while he drops those bombs though, which is pretty degenerate. Uh, that was off on timing. There we go. Almost lost the no miss, but here we are. Yeah, put it in his mouth, Maggie. You know you want to. <laughs> Let him have it. X's in the eyes. There you go. You win. <laughs> uh, man, it's been a while since I've dropped the Burns combo. I don't really know what to think about that. Still a great run, but bleh, that was... That was not fun to try to corral that. Uh, thank you all so much for the GG's. This game is a classic. It's, um... I find, it, I find it unfortunate that this is by far the best version of the game, in my opinion, and a lot of people probably haven't even played it. 
The US version is obviously more predominant in our region of the world, but it's quite a bit more unfair. Konami definitely United States the hell out of it. It's what it is. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. Anyway, that'll be one of four. Gonna move on to some wrestling here for y'all in just a moment once I sign my initials. Why not? Classic. Alright, thanks y'all. Stick around. <laughs> 